What's up, y'all? We are joining today from our live intensive, studying Pinterest ads and sharing all the good juicy details about Pinterest. So I'm sharing our live stream into the Instagram live. So welcome. If you see me looking off screen, it's because I'm sharing slides. There is a link to the replay. You can message us at support at pinsforprofit.com or DM message us, and I'll send you the live link for the um, for the live training so you guys can have the replay. All right, so here we go. I'm super excited to get rocking, talk about advertising. <laughs> it's an exciting day. All right, so let me share my screen. Let me get started. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the live training for Pinterest ads. What is up, guys and gals? Can't wait to have y'all. Excited to share all the good details. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to dive right in here. So let's see. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Message us and let me know where you guys are hanging out at. All right. So screen share. Okay, so I'm going to share my whole screen. Today, we're going to talk about getting started with Pinterest ads, going from 5X ROAS, basically starting from scratch and going, getting scaling to 5X ROAS on ads. Uh, you guys can ask questions about organic as well. We'll talk a little bit about that in general. This is our, mainly we're talking about ads today, but you can definitely ask questions if you have questions. And yeah, so here we go. All right, so welcome. This is definitely, we've been doing Pinterest ads for eight or nine years in a row now, which is crazy, ever since the ad platform became live. Uh, before that, I did a lot of interest, Pinterest marketing, but matching it up with an SEO plan. And it's amazing the amount of traffic and different things that can come, the relevance and credibility in a search engine that can happen if you start using Pinterest as a marketing channel for your business. So I'm excited that you guys are here. Definitely tag us on social media. You can find me anywhere. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff at Lindsay B. Shearer, also LinkedIn. You can also hashtag Pin Ads Academy. We're going to talk about that. We also have an awesome free Facebook group. If you're not in there, go ahead and join us. You can search Pin Ads or search my name and you'll find us on there. We do a lot of lives and trainings and all different fun stuff in there. So congratulations. You're in the right place. If you have been wanting to learn an awesome new skill, open a new marketing channel, which can be a daunting task. Believe me, I've done it many times, so I get it. I'm excited to be able to share all the tools and tricks and shortcuts and all the fun things with you guys so that you don't have to waste as much time as we did initially learning how to rock it on Pinterest ads. You can also go to our website, pins, the number four profit.com. There's a free download on there for a pin ads workbook that'll teach you different things like account setup, image setup, interest targeting, audience creation, that kind of thing. And you can also find Christina online too. Uh, for our client concierge, you can just search Christina Client Concierge or Team Lindsay Shearer and ask questions. Uh, we'll definitely get back to you within 24 hours. So, um, of course, excited. You guys are going to be getting some really great information. So make sure to take notes. If we have not met yet, what is up? I am Lindsay Shearer. I run two uh, eight-figure marketing agencies, one called Pins for Profit, one called Brand Ranks Media that's focused on SEO. Pins for Profit was birthed out of this glory of ranking high in search engines and matching up our Pinterest strategy with our SEO strategy and just getting a lot of traction and a lot of people in the e-commerce space, which not a lot of people were doing Pinterest, almost no one was doing Pinterest ads and or SEO is kind of like the last thing you add into an e-commerce brand. Once you've got some data and that kind of thing, make sure your funnels are working properly. So we have helped a lot of great brands capitalize on marketing on Pinterest and with SEO as well. So definitely here to help you guys. Uh, we mainly do just internally, we do a lot mostly done for you programs where we either do your Pinterest organic, Pinterest ads, your SEO, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we also do have some programs that are done with you, courses and trainings and stuff like that. You can check out at pinsforprofit.com. And also once you get this link, there is a link to our bootcamp training, which is coming out here shortly. So we can definitely help you guys in the ad space. Message us in the chat if you have questions. And I want you guys to get the most out of this event. So make sure and ask questions. Make sure to get the answers that you need. If you guys are in there messing around with your ads or you have questions about organic or just how search engines or algorithms work, I'm happy to help. You can always email, email us again at support at pinsforprofit.com. 
All right. So we've never really offered this particular event before. We're going to be diving deep into the strategies and scaling techniques that we have used to spend over $50 million a year for our clients profitably on an average 2x to 5x return. So for every dollar that was put in, they got a minimum two to five dollars back on that dollar. So who wouldn't add more money to that <laughs> type of a campaign? So I'm excited to chat with you guys about that. And it's really my goal to give you a clear understanding of the power of Pinterest as a paid ad channel and to help you get comfortable with this process of uh, marketing so that you're feeling really good and confident about your strategies and that uh, that you're spending the, your time and energy in the right places. So um, really quick, one second, I'm making Christina the host here because... For some reason, it's not allowing me to let everybody into the group. So one second. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for being patient. All right. Participants. Okay. Okay, cool. So you have hosting capabilities now, Christina. <laughs> Hopefully you can still hear me. Okay, good. All right. Um, so I need you to allow me to share my screen, Christina. <laughs> yeah, so it really is my goal to give you guys a clear understanding of Pinterest as a paid ads channel. It, there's a lot to learn, but it's it's totally worth it. It's something that uh, we I'm super glad that I have invested into this process of learning Pinterest ads. It was kind of a daunting task. I'm sure if you guys have tried Facebook ads before or Google ads or any of that kind of stuff that, um, in general, it, it can be a daunting task. So I'm excited for you guys to be here. Christina, can you hear me? So you can let me do the screen sharing permissions here. Yes, in general. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and answer your question, Jonathan, while you're asking. You're, if we run multiple ad accounts and verticals, do we need to set up an agency account with Pinterest or what is the best way to set that up? So in general, it's not as sophisticated. Pinterest isn't as, um, say, Facebook or whatever when you're trying to do your ad accounts. You have, so I generally recommend setting up a, like a specific account that you're going to use, like an account for you, because you do need to set up a business account, account to be added to your a client account. So I definitely recommend that you would set up a private separate business. So we have Brand Ranks Media that's set up on our side. And then we add Brand Ranks Media essentially to our client account. So you can add yourself as an advertiser like you would on Facebook, et cetera. But there are certain things that you can't do as an advertiser. So I generally recommend that if you're do if you're taking on client accounts that you would um also get their, their credentials and login credentials. Pinterest says that it has publisher access and that it allows you to do all the things that you need to be able to do, but you cannot upload images unless you actually are added as an advertiser or actually have the actual login credentials. So it's definitely something that I would consider getting the actual login information. So um, yeah, and, and Pinterest is great if you're an ads manager. It's great if you are actually just wanting to advertise your business, whether it's info products or um, e-commerce, obviously, or even just doing lead generation. So I'm going to share with you guys like our different strategies that we use for all of those different types of businesses. And so Pinterest really is a revolution. It's been a blue ocean space. It's an amazing platform that has a lot of really good high quality users. And because of that, and they have launched their ads platform, it's given us a really awesome opportunity to be able to uh, use that ads platform as a, a phenomenal return on investment strategy in blue ocean space for our clients. Everybody's looking for new ways, new different places to get new advertisers, to get new clients and customers. That's why you see TikTok and now all kinds of social media companies popping up because in general, they are looking for new places to get high quality customers. So I totally understand that process. Um, okay, so takeaways. I definitely want you guys to feel confident in this process of getting started on your ads, to understand how Pinterest fits into a cross-channel marketing strategy, to find your right buyers, learn how to use targeting on Pinterest, to use to understand our best practices to launch your 
your Pinterest ads, also using shopping campaigns and also campaign strategies for scaling your brands to 4X plus on Pinterest, which is always the goal. Um, let's see. And then, of course, um, we'll have some specific targeting strategies for different holidays, especially Mother's Day is coming up. So we definitely want to talk about that. And I also want you guys to feel confident about setting up your first ad. And just want you guys to know these are not strategies that we are using in theory, but these are actual things that we use on a daily basis to help our clients spend over $50 million a year in ads. Um, and also we've mastered these strategies over many years and multiple amounts of ad spend. So we get to use other clients' amazing <laughs> ad spend opportunities to create awesome traffic sources and to test all different types of things on Pinterest. And of course, we don't want to do that with it consuming all of our time, but I want to teach you guys strategies that uh, were born out of frustration and endless amounts of testing, but you guys don't have to wait for that process. And in general, I've been in shock about how amazing Pinterest is as a channel, the quality of traffic, the amount of traffic that comes from there. I've seen just crazy things. This is Kara, one of our clients who is in the acupuncture space and she sells supplements and different brands online. And she's had just crazy amounts of success and lead generation with Pinterest, which is awesome. Pinterest is not just for wedding planning anymore. I always get people ask me this question, <laughs> which is amazing. So um, it used to be just, you know, everyone kind of is a little curious and you can, you know, it's a visual search engine. Maybe you've gotten on there and tried a few things, or maybe you have tried ads or maybe not. But it is now an extremely viable option for their, essentially their ads platform has become more and more uh, aggressive and more and more competitive. So I'm excited to see the growth and to see the opportunity. And if you're considering using it as an ads channel, there's a crazy amount of stuff that's happening uh, for growing and trying to stay in the competitive edge. And we'll talk about some of those things from idea pins, which are competing competing or essentially trying to uh, come in on Pinterest to be like Instagram reels or TikToks or things like that. So they're really working hard to stay relevant. And if you've been in advertising for any amount of time, then you understand that there's a fundamental shift in that people are looking for multiple channels. There is this quick uh, shiny object syndrome that's going on where you're trying to get quick amounts of data and information, that kind of thing. So uh, we definitely are using video ads and different things to capitalize on that shorter attention span. And then also there have been a lot of things that have happened over the last year when it comes to privacy updates. You guys have probably seen on every website that you go to now on social media or whatever, you get a little pop-up that says that you're opting into essentially tracking and information. It used to be that you were automatically opt into, opted into that and now you're not. So that presents as an advertiser a lot of tracking problems and different things to where if you're not automatically opted in, it's harder to get targeting and harder to get data. So we're going to talk about targeting options and how to shift multiple channels to find your right audience and where people are hanging out so that you know you're getting good high quality leads that are a match for your brand and also helping you become competitive in channels that you feel will be a match for your brand. And of course, the idea of community emphasis is becoming more and more powerful. Everybody's starting groups and everybody's using Discord and Slack and these different things to try and engage and have a more deeper relationship with the community. So that Pinterest is definitely a shift there. It's a very positive platform. And of course, the future really is to master new marketing channels where you're going to be able to find your audience and where they're hanging out. And if they're hanging and if they're actually in buying mode and looking at purchasing products and trying to find solutions to their problems, which Pinterest is an excellent place for that. And most successful e-commerce brands are definitely taking Pinterest on as a marketing channel because of many different things. But the Pinterest demographic has stronger purchasing power than other social media platforms because it's really not a social media platform. It has social media elements, but it actually is a search engine. So if you think about that more from the behavior of Google, and we're going to talk about search behavior and how to create your content based on search behavior then you've got a lot more stickiness and a lot more authenticity and a lot longer lasting ads and things like that. So it's the perfect place for ad buyers also to find affluent female millennials. The average person using Pinterest makes over $100,000 a year and they are actively planning purchases. So it's an awesome place for relevant traffic and getting your content in front of a bigger audience. Some topics we're going to cover, mastering your mindset on how you're thinking and creating content 
how you're finding your audiences, how you're using Pinterest to generate a new income stream, how your products should be positioned in sales strategy for Pinterest ads to get the fastest types of sales, creating an evergreen ecosystem that's consistent for scaling, and also taking into consideration some organic traffic that's going to be coming from Pinterest. And yeah, so I've done a lot of speaking and a lot of teaching and help some great brands really develop these different types of strategies. So please ask questions. If you guys have questions, we will find the answer for you. <laughs> uh, and definitely the old paradigm has been maybe to have one or two channels and the new par paradigm in advertising is really to, to have somewhat of an omni-channel approach where you're essentially creating some kind of a presence on every channel. So even if you're just creating a presence on Pinterest, these are going to be great bits of information to help you create a great profile, think about your image creation, share content, that kind of thing. But you definitely can't be dependent on one or two channels anymore. We've got way too many ad bans, way too many rising ad costs, things like that with the privacy updates. Uh, it, the targeting is much harder, which makes your ads more expensive. Your conversion rates have to be better and better. There's more people in the e-commerce space and the advertising space. And so they're creating higher quality products and pages and websites. And essentially you have to have a more well-rounded business to actually have success online marketing these days. Uh, the days of drop shipping and just throwing up a store and hoping that everything's going to go good and not having a lot of competition really are over. So now the idea of creating a good brand that people bring in trust and they feel trusting of that brand is a requirement for success online. And of course, these strategies were built, built out of a lot of stress and finding out all of those lessons the hard way, a lot of tests, and definitely the best brands are actively looking for new places to reach organic and high quality paid ad traffic. So and of course, education and training from real experts is hard to come by. There really aren't a lot of high, what I would consider high level advertisers on Pinterest. There are people who maybe have had a media, you know, a measure of success, but we've done millions of dollars per year with really extremely detailed testing strategies. So we're going to tell you the things that we're seeing that are working. And keep in mind with the privacy and data sharing updates and how they've affected advertisers as you're automatically opted in, then you have, or used to be automatically opted in and there was lots more data that could be shared. So your pixel, AKA the tracking device from your ad back to your website uh, that collects that data, you could collect a lot more information about your ideal customer. So when you go in to create an audience, you could target them a lot better. You could find your ideal audience for much cheaper, much faster. And now, after the updates, it's much harder. There's a lot less da data that's being shared. There are a lot less data markers and they're much less specific on your targeting. So we've had to make some changes to expand our thinking of targeting into a broader sense uh, than, and allowing the algorithm to make do some of that heavy lifting for us instead of it used to be that we'd get really targeted and super specific with our audiences and now we're much more broad. So that's definitely a strategy that you wanna keep in mind. But learning to run a new ad channel is definitely necessary. So reasons we love Pinterest, it, and maybe you've tried Pinterest before, and or you've never tried it, sorry, and you're curious about the results, or you feel like your product or service might be a good fit, and you have no idea where to start, you're not sure if you should hire someone or do it yourself, or maybe you've run ads on other channels, or maybe you have tried Pinterest before, but you're really not sure if it's converting for you. You're not sure if your your tracking is set up properly. You don't know this if you have a specific strategy or your images and funnels are not designed for Pinterest buying behavior, and maybe you're not patient enough for lasting results. That's something that we'll talk about today. And of course, I've I would definitely say that uh, diving into a new channel is is difficult. And a hundred percent of the time of audits that I have done on Pinterest ad accounts, I would say there are a massive room for improvement. So you're not alone. It's definitely a daunting process, and I'm going to try to debunk as many of those myths as I can for you guys, but I can promise you that there are crazy results. We're seeing crazy things on Pinterest. This is just one sample client who spent $300,000 and got a $2.67 million return with an eight, nine X ROAS, which is just insanity. It's insane on really any channel, but then add that on Pinterest is kind of crazy. And this particular client did not, wasn't sure if we were going to, if they wanted to try uh, Pinterest as an ad channel or not. So I'm really glad that they did. <laughs> uh, and then also maybe you've experienced ad bans, ad account shutdowns. It's very common. It happens all the time on Facebook. Um, 
Instagram, it happens a lot on Google, those kinds of things, or maybe your products are disapproved. Like you, there are certain products that have a really hard time advertising on multiple channels, including supplements, uh, things like that. Like swimwear sometimes is really difficult because you, you have to have a measure of modesty and people are not really, most ad accounts are a little weird about showing any skin and things like that. So there, we've helped a lot of great clients because Pinterest has less lax rules on some of those things. And so we've been able to get, and they also have better existing customer support, which if you've run Facebook ads for any amount of time, you know, <laughs> you know, the battle of customer support. And for sure, we, most of the accounts, again, that we've audited are not set up for what we consider our best practices, or they're not optimized specifically for Pinterest. Um, but I'm going to help you guys create a sustainable roadmap because Pinterest uh, there are some key things that you need to know about Pinterest in order to have really good success there. So definitely, I want to help you guys approach it with fresh eyes from the perspective of a marketer and also from the perspective of a purchaser so that you're thinking about your content. Because sometimes we kind of get pigeonholed into this idea of like we're marketers and we think we understand. But if you've run any measure of ads before, you know that half the time, the things that you think are going to convert never convert. <laughs> and the things that you don't think are convert are tear or they look terrible or whatever, half the time those ones perform the best. So you want to make sure that you're taking yourself out of the equation and trying and testing things that maybe you didn't think would be like the most amazing thing and seeing what the audience says. Because at the end of the day, the audience votes and they're the ones that say, this is what's going to convert. And this is why we're going to be purchasing this thing. So Pinterest does drive major high quality traffic. We are seeing some of our cheapest leads, our cheapest cost per lead or cost per impressions, definitely on Pinterest. High, really high quality lead. People are excited about using the platform. They're using it regularly. 63% of users on Pinterest have made purchases on there. And that number sometimes is even higher when I read the stats and the different things that are coming out um, on the quarterly reports and stuff like that. So it's really good, high quality traffic, all different types of brands. We've been able to help beauty brands, anything that's gift related does am amazingly well. Hair care products, home decor, mom and baby brands, fashion brands, skincare, supplements, information products, courses, coaching, blogging, free downloads, uh, paid downloads, trainings, food and beverage, parenting, makeup, jewelry, you name it. We've essentially done it on Pinterest. I've rarely had, and actually now 40% of new users are actually men on Pinterest, which is kind of a crazy thing to think about. I never used to take on men's brands for advertising, but now we're seeing a lot of really great conversions, uh, tons of new users on the platform, that kind of thing. So there are a few things that make Pinterest marketing different. One, Pinterest is actually the 10th largest search engine on the planet. So when you're creating your content, you're thinking through this process of intention-based content that people are coming there to search for a solution to their problem. So when you position your content, you want to be the solution to their problem. You want to have your images and your visual search engine information being something that they're, they can see as a solution to their problem. 93% of people are on there to make purchases and plan purchases. So there's much higher search intent um, on Pinterest than there is in, in actually purchase intent. So it's much less of a disruptive marketing platform. Like Facebook is like interruptive marketing or disruptive marketing, we call it. Whereas Pinterest, people are actually on there to plan purchases, find their purchases, that kind of thing. So like I said, 63% of users have over $100,000 a year in income and 51% of people are on there at least once a week which is crazy. That's super highly engaged. And 40% of new users are men. So you definitely want to take that into consideration when you're considering Pinterest as an ad channel for your market. And there are some major missed opportunities on Pinterest. First of all, it's a visual search engine. So you want to be very specific on how you're creating your images and your videos and making sure that those are in alignment with the search behavior and the interest targeting and that type of thing on Pinterest. And then also you want to approach it differently than other platforms. You can't just create content for Instagram or Facebook or whatever and expect it to convert on Pinterest. It's got to have its own strategy. It's got to work with the buying behavior of folks who are searching for products on Pinterest. And also it's search-based content and intention-based marketing. So you're going to be using a keyword strategy and things like that to really help you target the right people. 
And the funnels and creatives are much different than other platforms. You really got to be intentional about how you're creating content for Pinterest, for sure. And of course, cross-channel tracking is always a nightmare. <laughs> this is the multi-billion dollar question that even Google hasn't solved yet. But essentially, reporting is an art of mastery. We've, we've had to come in and create our entire own reporting system for Pinterest because it's really difficult to track cross-channel because it has a delayed... Um, we call it delayed attribution buying behavior, where it takes people a while to see an image and come in and then purchase later. And it's actually designed that way where you can save images and come back and purchase later. That affects how we are able to track the data and the user interaction on Pinterest. So we've had to create our own system for that. <laughs> so here we go. This is our pin ranks e-com system, we call it, which is having the right foundation to succeed on Pinterest. You've got to have four major components. One, your creative has to be on point. It's got to be Pinterest specific. Your design has to be specific. Your um, image design, your content, and then also your funnel process and how you're treating your brand and how people are coming into your ecosystem, we call it, uh, has to be really on point. Your targeting has to be really good with both the mix of keywords and interests. Your optimization has to be good on how you're optimizing your ads. You don't want to be optimizing them too fast because Pinterest is a slower moving platform. So there's different optimization strategies than you would use on Facebook, et cetera. And of course, your tracking has to be on point so you can actually see how these conversions are happening, what the data is happening. So if you're thinking about what is the cost of filling your funnels, um, I usually recommend, so for most brands, if you have a brand new brand and you're just thinking about which ad channels you want to start with to try and validate your funnels, we call it, aka make sure that your funnels are converting when people actually go to your pages that they're becoming new customers. I usually recommend that you do that. It's much quicker and much more easy on Facebook. So I would recommend usually that you do it on Facebook, sometimes TikTok, depending on the brand, but having an idea of what it's costing you to fill your funnels, knowing your target cost per lead, knowing your target cost per purchase is an excellent thing to know before you come in and start doing Pinterest marketing because it is gonna take a little bit longer generally to get to those numbers. So I recommend starting with Pin with Facebook, et cetera, and then knowing your target KPIs when you come to start advertising on Pinterest. So your average order value, what is the amount of time it takes from a, from a person seeing an ad until they purchase? Your target CPA, we call it, which is your cost per acquisition. What is it costing you to get a new client? Your ROAS, your return on ad spend. What is your goal? What is profitable and break even? Is it, uh, say, um, it costs you, uh, if you want to have a $30 CPA, then your ROAS may be, so if it's profitable for you to acquire a new client at $30, then your ROAS goal may be 2X, which would be $60. So you, for an, in order for things to be profitable, it may, 1X may be profitable at $30, but your goal is really 2X to cover all the different things that you need to cover in your business, pay your employees, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then also you want to know your cost per million impressions in general. They're much cheaper. Your cost per lead are much cheaper on Pinterest in general. So, and also you want to make sure that you have enough budget to actually accurately test a new marketing channel. Sometimes I see people throw up a bunch of ads and they just kind of hope they're going to work. Um, that's really, uh, I would say, a flawed approach. <laughs> In general, if you're making a plan to really start and try and test Pinterest ads, I always tell our clients that this is a four-month strategy, like a four-month plan. Month one, we're going to be testing a lot of things. Month two, we're going to start finding some winners that are emerging. Month three, we're really going to start scaling. And then by month four, you're going to see the delayed attribution and, and what is possible for your, your ads on Pinterest. So I generally do not recommend just throwing a couple hundred dollars up here and hoping that it's going to work and just convert and, and see stuff like that you would maybe see on Facebook. It's going to take much longer to get out of what we call learning mode, which is when you very first add your new ads to the platform, it's going to take longer to get some data on those. So definitely recommend. But the cool thing about Pinterest is it really does have good organic staying potential. So the length of time that an image lasts on the platform is much longer. And outside of your attribution window, people can actually save the images and come back later uh, and they don't even have to be clicking on the ad, they can see them organically and that information is going to show up for you organically. And I have things that I published on my personal Pinterest page over five years ago, and they're still getting traffic every single month. So 
definitely want to make sure that you are thinking from this longer term evergreen strategy. And like I mentioned, our average client is getting two to five X at scale. So there's so much potential there. Here's another client that um, is in Europe and 30 K in spend with $140,000 return. So four and a four point five X row as so Pinterest is definitely scalable. There's a lot of different things that you can do in order to create good strategies. And so for us to create an ir irresistible Pinterest strategy, you must understand that you've got to master the Pinterest buying behavior. Now, Pinterest is a search engine and we call it a pre-search engine or a search and discovery engine before people are even going to Google or going to Amazon to buy things. They are also going on Pinterest to get ideas and get inspiration. So you've got to use it like one. You've got to think about, okay, if someone's planning a purchase and they're, they have high search intent, but they're trying to figure out what they want in a complete strategy. So say, for example, they want to redecorate their living room and you're a rug company. Okay, so you've got to give them ideas in this pre-search process uh, of solving their problems. Say they want to buy a blue rug, but they can't envision a blue rug into their <laughs> color scheme of their picture. So you want to be able to give them this visual search element that's going to allow them to envision your product in their home or in their, you know, on their hair or on their body, if they're wearing, buying, buying clothes or what it's going to look like if they buy this info product and what are the results going to be. So, and also thinking of a keyword strategy through that process. So people are planning purchases. They have a really high search intent. So we use an intent-based targeting system. So we've got custom audience demographics and those are interest-based demographics. So things like um, on Facebook, you also have a lot in Google, et cetera, you have this opportunity to target different interests, uh, things that people like that are in relationship with your brand. So maybe the type of people that you want to target also buy Teslas or they also buy Mercedes or whatever. You want to think about those unique interest specific things in your process. And then you also want to create content for your visual search and discovery tools that, again, is focused on the results is focused on those interest groups, those things that people are interested in, and then also have both a search engine and keyword strategy. So if they're interested in, if you have a home decor product and you're trying, like I said, a blue rug and you want to help them find a blue rug, then you definitely want to be using blue rug in your keyword strategy. Definitely want to have a good, clear keyword strategy, visual search and creative, and a long-term strategy, even for your ads. They all need to have logos and things on them because people can save those images and come back later. And if you change the link on your web page and they don't know what your brand is and you just have this beautiful picture of an interior of a home, then it's not really going to be do you any good long term to try and get them as a new customer. So this pre-search and uh, pre-search engine behavior is extremely unique. It allows you the ability to influence shopping decisions pre-brand, like before people know and understand your brand. So months before maybe they would go to Amazon or Google weeks before they're going to purchase something. And of course, days of we're all used to buying things off of Facebook ads and seeing that kind of last minute purchase. The ability to influence shopping decisions is much earlier in the process of buying. And then the shopping brand decisions are already made by the time that they're going to Amazon, they're going to Google, they're seeing things on social media. So you want to keep that in mind on Pinterest that that also people have the unique opportunity to see an image, save an image and come back later and purchase. It's the only platform that really has that built into their buying behavior. So you've got to consider that when you're creating your content, for example. We don't generally recommend on Pinterest that you do super short term strategies. So like a weekend sale or something like that, I don't recommend that you do that because by the time a person sees an image, saves it and comes back later, that coupon code that maybe you had available for that weekend is no longer available. So you wanna make sure in your process that you're creating content that has the ability to last longer to, uh, to be in alignment with the Pinterest buying behavior. Also, we generally recommend that you have longer attribution windows at least for starting, because you want to make sure that that the algorithm has enough opportunity to find your right customers. So we generally leave our attribution windows open a little bit longer, at least initially. And then after that, uh, you can reduce them over time. And then you have this mix of social media buying behavior, which you kind of see on on 
um, things like Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing. And then you also have search engine media buying behavior where people are searching keywords and they're searching for solutions to their problems. And so you want to have a mix of your content that you're creating that's based on search too. And trust on Pinterest is insanely important. You want to address the entire client journey. So make sure your landing pages are in alignment with your images and that kind of thing. And then also a mix of brand awareness and direct response where people maybe have never seen your brand before um, and you're trying to help them to get engaged with your brand through discount codes or different things like that to help them engage as fast as possible to shorten the amount of time that, that it takes from them to see an image, save it, and come back and purchase. And of course, you want to make sure that you're searchable, that your content, your descriptions, your headlines, your images all have keywords in them so that people can find you and you be searchable. So think about that as you're creating content for your search. You have interest-based search, and then you also have keywords-based search, things that people are interested in, results that they're interested in, keywords that they're interested in when they're going in there and looking to buy a solution to their problem. So the cool thing about Pinterest as well is I always get asked, what about uh, followers and things like that and people liking all of your stuff? The cool thing about Pinterest, because it's a search engine, Profitability does not have to equal <laughs> popularity and profitability is much more important than popularity because your content and information, if it's keyworded correctly, is going to show up in search whether or not you have any followers or not. So it's not something that's needed. Um, it, you can encourage, I, I would encourage it if you're trying to get followers, but it's not something that we spend like a lot of money on with our strategy, that kind of thing. And of course, you want to make sure that you have um, your optimization metrics, your interest targeting, your audience creation, your keywords created, and your funnels ready to go for Pinterest. And, and the main way you do that is figuring out and positioning yourself based on what problems you're solving. So how you are essentially creating content for results. So for example, we just onboarded this amazing company. It's a tea company. They do custom-made teas and tea blends and different things like that. Well, most of their content were focused on different tea blends to solve different problems like stress, anxiety, uh, sleeplessness, inflammation, different things like that, detox things. Uh, you can't really say weight loss in your ads, but you can still use things like that in organic. And so we're mainly focused on, we're not saying, okay, this is a custom hibiscus tea. We may use some of that because that is a good search term if we do our research, but mainly we're focused on T for reducing inflammation, T for uh, helping you have better sleep at night, that kind of thing. So if you think about your content that way and you kind of just shift to more what problems are you solving, it makes it much more searchable in the search engine in general. And then of course, with our signature process, we are helping you create intent-based targeting, creating your ecosystem so that you're actually tracking better optimization and scaling all our different strategies and different things that you've got to think about when you're creating your content and seeing how things are working and scaling. So we always make sure that your brand is searchable and discoverable, that you are integrated into a cross-channel marketing strategy, aka maybe Pinterest is something that you're going to use for your really top of funnel, new clients who've never seen you before, or maybe it's something that's going to be more of a retargeting strategy because you know your pin, your clients are hanging out on Pinterest and you're trying to purchase push them more towards purchasing. We always do luxury imaging and messaging, making sure that it feels perfect for your brand, that it's super clear, that everything it looks nice because it is a visual search engine. So we want it to look professional. Um, and then of course, getting everything launched and scaling based on how people, of course, you got to test and figure out your scaling strategy based on what is working for your person, uh, your type of brand. So, and then of course, if you're, is your brand ready to advertise on Pinterest, definitely you've got to have a strategy that addresses the entire, entire client journey. So your image needs to match. So like if we're results-based focused and we're helping on this T client, reduce client inflammation, and that's the main image that we're creating, then when they get to the funnel, they also need to see on the product page things like we're addressing um, reducing inflammation with this tea. So you want to make sure that you're addressing that entire client journey from why they clicked on your ad to what, what kind of result they're really trying to get. So you want to dive deeper into those pain points and show showcase your product as a solution to that. So we're always creating content calendars, especially if you're doing organic marketing for ads, 
that kind of thing. We are updating product pages and making sure that we're hitting those results based focused and that we're adding keywords in our headlines and descriptions. We're adding those keywords on the landing pages. We're making sure that the image itself actually has keywords and then we're actually targeting those keywords within the ads too. So you want to have a good content strategy. Uh, there's a couple places that you can go and find and do some research to find really good keywords. So the first place is called the trends tool. It's trends.pinterest.com. You can open that. And if you start looking at like, for, for example, holiday time, you can start to see keywords that are trending. If you type in Christmas or you type in Mother's Day, you'll see keywords that are trending in that space that you can use to to track and optimize, which is amazing. And then they also forecast it forward for the upcoming month. So it's great. It's a really great tool. And then you can also just like you would go to Google um, and, and look in your search engine as you start typing things on Google, you have different search suggestions that come up. The same is also true for Pinterest. So get on there actually start typing in some keywords that you think are going to be good options for your brand or things that you've tried with Google ads or whatever, and start seeing what kind of content is being created that's actually ranking for those keywords. So you can know how you're going to position yourself to be competitive, what's working, what's showing up when you're typing those keywords in, you can see what's already ranking. So then you have an idea of like, okay, this is what I need to create in order to rank higher. Now, a couple strategies that we always recommend for your images and creatives um, one, you want to create images and videos that have show, show your logo the entire time. Like I mentioned, Pinterest is long term. So, and it has a lot of organic staying power. So you want to make sure that the content that even you're creating for ads is something people can come back later and actually uh, engage with and know that it's your brand. You want to have good quality product images, titles and headlines. If you have a discount code, go ahead and put that on there. A good call to action. We recommend large text that it's easy to read, engagement, action, and bright colors. Here's a couple more examples for some free downloads, um, making sure that your discount code or whatever it is is highlighted. And then for videos, you want to do two to three sizing, so the longer, taller sizing. And you want to make them ideally seven to 15 seconds, showing your logo the entire time, having closed captions if someone's speaking. We like to make them fun and engaging. Definitely they want to be on autoplay and then you would have uh, your captions and your call to action on there so that they uh, are engaged in that kind of thing. We also see generally lifestyle images and videos do better than just straight product images for top of funnel. And then for bottom of funnel, it's kind of a mix of lifestyle and then also product images. So you want to make sure your gear, your images are geared towards a Pinterest audience and that they're more evergreen offers that you can optimize uh, ongoing for ads and organic. You can also test and put some things up for organic and see how people are engaging with them and then use those highest converting images on your ads. And then of course, for your landing pages, we always do a mixture of sending to homepage, sending to blog posts, sending to product pages and sending to collections pages, depending on the type of products that you're creating. Uh, but we usually recommend to try and test it out and see where people are converting. So there are definitely a different, a lot of types of spectrum, spectrum of funnels and offer types uh, for e-commerce, info products, downloads and PDFs. So we definitely recommend um, if you have e-commerce and high ticket offers that you're testing funnels that also have lower ticket opt-in strategies, same with the courses. And then of course we do a lot of lead gen even for our e-commerce clients. So there's a lot of options there. You definitely have brand awareness campaigns where you can put your brand out there. It's the only place that you can do targeted CPMs, which are much cheaper impressions and things like that. If you want to just get some baseline impressions, you can use shopping campaigns. We use mainly conversion and shopping campaigns, conversion campaigns. You optimize for deeper funnel objectives like add to carts, checkouts, lead generation, and shopping campaigns. You can also do dynamic retargeting, which is the only place you can do dynamic retargeting, which means if a person sees your pair of white boots that you're selling, then they're going to see that same pair of white boots again later uh, as they're retargeted with different ads. And of course, car we do a lot of done for you services, courses, e-commerce product funnels, uh, community building event and live event promos, and just making sure that you have a consistent scale strategy and a large enough budget to test a solid new channel. And of course, creating a consistent uh, Pinterest sales system means that you have an entire brand strategy and that you're focused on your branding. You know the problems that you're solving. You have a good quality, healthy offer. 
that your audience and market fit you think is a good fit for Pinterest. Most of the time, that's pretty intuitive. If you think your audience is on there, most likely they are. That you have a good, decent email and SMS system set up, that your funnels are designed well, and that they're converting. So with these elements, for sure, you've got a long-term recipe for success on Pinterest, and you can launch new offers quickly and efficiently. <laughs> so we're going to talk, talk now about the types of campaigns and the marketing strategies that we use having your goals in mind, your goal number of registrations, conversions, number of products that you want to sell. For top of funnel, this is getting a lot of brand new folks into your funnels. We see a lot of really good strategies here on Pinterest, things like driving even e-commerce brands to in informational blogs that have um, opt-ins or have add to carts on them, those kinds of things. People on interest, uh, Pinterest are very interested in education. So definitely sharing education-based information, even if you're driving straight to product page, sharing information about your brand, education about the product, how it's sourced, the ingredients, uh, the materials that are used, more information about how you created the product. People are very interested in that. I would say for top of funnel and middle of funnel, helping them kind of remember your offers, trying different uh, images and videos for your ads and then also for bottom of funnel then you can get away with more things like driving them straight to product and what we still use on most of our images even bottom of funnel we still use a lot of information that's results focused so want to make sure that you highlight those things and take into consideration like i said the the delayed buying behavior on average on pinterest the amount of time from when a person sees an image until when they purchase an image is 20 days so keeping that in mind when you're starting new campaigns that you want to leave them on for long enough to make sure that you're getting enough conversions. Once you get over that initial hump, then you can usually realize, okay, this is converting or it's doing better or it needs to be updated or those kinds of things. But you want to make sure that they're on long enough and that you have enough patience to work with the natural buying behavior versus trying to force people into a two-day purchase time, which is not usually happening on Pinterest. Sometimes it does. Some clients hit it right out of the gate. Sometimes they need longer. And so you want to make sure you're utilizing your ideal campaign types to make sure you, you're hitting the row as that you want to hit. Sometimes um, it takes longer. I always tell people some, some battles are won very quickly initially. <laughs> and some people, some battles are, some brands are a little bit of a harder fight. But we do see a really good long-term consistent ROAS, longer staying power on Pinterest that has organic power uh, as well. And then lower CPLs over time, especially over about eight weeks, we see our cost per leads and cost per acquisition dramatically drop. So uh, that's an amazing thing. So you definitely want to think about what is a new client worth? What is your normal acquisition cost? What are your CPMs on other channels? And do you have a budget to open a new channel? Um, and with shopping campaigns, you can use multiple feeds, which is great. You can test and see which kind of products people are engaging with the most and figure out how to position your, your information on Pinterest so that you're getting the best type of engagement with the products that make the most sense. So inside the product groups, you can create multiple product groups where you can choose the most popular or new arrivals or back in stock or those kinds of things and figure out where your audience is hanging out. What kind of products are they engaging with the most? Like I said, you never know until you actually do testing. Because a lot of times we'll think it's one thing and then all of a sudden it's actually something else or maybe one audience likes one product better. And so that's great. You can break that audience and that product out and then maybe you can retarget them with another product that they might like and or might be their second favorite, that kind of thing to increase the order value, that kind of thing long-term. Um, but there's a lot of really crazy potential in there. Like I said, I keep showing you shopping campaigns are where we see some of our best performance over time. So I definitely recommend that you test and try the shopping campaigns if you have more than a few products. So typically, if you only have one or two products, we don't usually recommend it uh, because it's actually going to create a feed kind of like an e-commerce feed. Say you had 200 products in your store, it'll create a small feed that shows all those different products until you get certain products that break out essentially where people are engaging with those more. So until that happens, usually I don't recommend that you just try one or two products because it's going to be more expensive. So I would recommend just going ahead and going with a conversion campaign, but you can get away with some really cool sales. <laughs> uh, okay. So, and then of course for our keyword focus, 
You want to do interest-based and search-based broad keywords, so shorter tail keywords. If you think about Google, a lot of times you're doing longer tail keywords. So things like, um, so on Pinterest, we may use the word photographer, and that's just really one of the keywords we target because it's a shorter tail keyword. It's broad. It's going to hit everything that we're trying to hit. Whereas if we're on Google, we may say best photographer in Nashville or whatever. That's more of a longer tail keyword. So on Pinterest, we're definitely doing a shorter tail keyword strategy. You can target a lot of different types of audiences on Pinterest as well. So you can reconnect with users for people that you already have on an email list that have engaged with your, maybe come to your websites for site visitors or added a product to cart. You can also find new customers based on interests, based on keywords. And you can also create what we call act alike, which is similar to Facebook lookalike customers who look alike your or act like your previous purchasers. So, and then also for shopping campaigns, you can do the dynamic retargeting where they, if they engage with an, uh, a certain product, they'll see that product again. So you want to think about that when you're uh, creating your top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, funnel pin, uh, interests. And using that when you're thinking about creative as you're optimizing and targeting and tracking. And for sure, you want to make sure that you're patient. Like I said, it takes 20 days from the time a person sees an image until they come back later and they're ready to purchase. So it takes, and that's average. So there's going to be shorter and then there's also going to be longer. So it takes a little bit longer for creatives to warm up, ads to warm up, keywords to warm up, et cetera. And so keep that in mind. This is not Facebook. It's not Google. It's not Instagram. It is its own platform where people see an image, save it, they come back and purchase. So you want to keep that in mind. And you also want to allow, they also now have what's called CBO, campaign budget optimization, which allows you to let the algorithm choose where it's going to give the best budget to the different performers. So if you created three ad sets with three different audiences, but you really only wanted to spend $100 per day, then you could put that $100 per day on the entire campaign and create those ad sets with the different audiences so you know you're only going to spend $100 a day and let the algorithm tell you which audience is going to perform best. So that's an excellent way to do it. You can also still do, we still do some manual budget optimization where we put a small little budget on each um, type of audience and figure out what's going to work the best and do more manual manipulations. So there's a lot of different, um, we've seen some crazy case studies where I had, this is a hair extension client that we've do, been doing Facebook ads for many years and started growing and scaling. And she wanted to open a new marketing channel. And so we definitely opened Pinterest. And within six weeks, we're getting a steady wide three to five X return, which is amazing. So um, with a cheaper price point, cheaper CPA, things like that, then you're getting on Facebook, which is awesome. So here's an example of her. She was in Europe with average 3X return on 267,000. These are all 30 day screenshots. So 267 in one month and did an $826,000 return that month. Um, and then we do get results for clients, it actually usually better results for clients even that have, I always get asked, okay, you have a lot of case studies with a lot of spend. What happens with a small amount of spend? Generally, we see even better results with a small spend. Here's a client that spent $4,000 and returned $67,000. So 17X return on theirs. <laughs> so that's one thing to keep in, in mind as you're thinking about uh, paid ads and choosing your objective. So brand awareness, again, is the only place that you can do intentional cost per million impressions. If you really just want to test a new creative, see what people are engaging with. Traffic campaigns are non-algorithm based. We use those a lot for top of funnel objectives or something that has a shorter lifespan. So say it's maybe a more um, seasonal product or something that's a shorter term campaign, maybe like a month long. By shorter term, I generally don't recommend using anything that's less than a month. Um, and then we also use retargeting, which you can use in any, any strategy. And then of course, conversion campaigns, which are algorithm based deeper funnel objective, shopping campaigns. Uh, now they have video view campaigns, which is awesome. So you can retarget people who've watched 25, 50, or 75% of your video. And they also have idea pin campaigns where you can target um, their competitive advantage now of trying to compete with Instagram Reels and TikToks is Pinterest has what's called an idea pin. So now you can actually promote those and use those in ads and get some really good returns. So they do have app install campaigns, but we don't use them very much because they're very difficult to use. <laughs> 
But in general, like I said, there's some more shopping campaigns and different things that you can see some crazy results. So if you're thinking about creating a new channel, getting the next step in your conversion process, you definitely want to make sure that your Pinterest account is set up properly. First thing you want to do, if you don't have yet a business account, you want to convert your personal account to a business account, and you'll know it's converted by actually seeing the ads available in the top middle of the screen. But on your personal account, you can just go to settings and apply for a business account. You will also be able to see a lot of in analytics and account overview. You also want to get your um, initial Pinterest profile set up so that you have your images and your main boards are set up so that your profile looks professional and you're showcasing the different products that you have, uh, making sure that everything you can see in your ads manager, the different analytics and that kind of thing. You want to set your pixel up, which is a piece of code that goes either on your website or your landing page that's going to collect the data and push it back to your Pinterest ad account. And then you want to make sure that you're checking your analytics and trying and testing those new things. So definitely consider all, um, what is it costing you not to open a new marketing channel. <laughs> and if you're ready, so here are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Um, where is your niche market hanging out on Pinterest? So if they're in the home decor space, you definitely want to target home decor interests, home decor keywords, that kind of thing. If uh, And then you want to make sure your account and tech is all set up so that you're actually tracking properly. You want to test your pixels. You want to make sure your audiences are actually populating more than sometimes when you put an audience in there, it doesn't populate properly. So you want to make sure all of that is set up, that you're seeing the analytics on the organic side, that your images and content is created for Pinterest, that you're, even if you're just going in Canva and making your own images or you're making your own videos, that they are intentional for Pinterest and that they have your logo and information, that you're actually using a keyword plan, that you're getting visible and searched on Pinterest. So everything that you create on your headlines, descriptions, images, et cetera, include keywords, that your targeting is a mix of keywords and interest-based targeting, that you have a good pinning schedule if you're planning on doing organic uh, pinning. We usually recommend at least one to five pins per day and a mix of idea pins and static images and videos, uh, that you have a good funnel strategy that's specific for Pinterest that includes some education, includes some background information about your brand, uh, that you have a good lead generation strategy, even if you're e-commerce, that you're collecting leads and that those leads are getting on your email list. So you're doing pop-ups on your website and making sure that you have an, some type of an email specific discount, something like that, that's going to entice them to engage in your email list, that you're consistently conversion rate optimizing your site so that you're making sure that the, the people that are actually landing on your site are actually converting, <laughs> that you're reading and understanding the analytics and what's actually moving the needle for you in analytics, uh, that you are navigating your cross-channel marketing strategy. And this is an ever-evolving process. So you can message us if you need help with uh, tracking for sure. And that you're utilizing new features on Pinterest. They have an enhanced match feature, which is amazing. It allows you to track people through their email. They have automatic bidding features, which allows the algorithm to figure out the best bid, which is amazing. Definitely worth a try. Different new campaign types that they're opening all the time. There's lead ads and different things that are coming out now too, if you just want to optimize for leads. Uh, CBO manual bidding, making sure that you're tracking the creative changes with the idea pins and different things like that. So you're utilizing those new strategies. So we teach all of this stuff in our Pin Ads Academy mentorship, and we just really, um, for many years, I never really did a training program. And that's because things change so quickly with Pinterest, but I would rather give you guys a, uh, a really good system that I know that's going to help you open a marketing channel and scale your business through a new channel, learning from us, allowing us to take all the risks <laughs> and you take much smaller risks because you get to know what, what is actually working um, and help you master this marketer mindset, embodying the next level of your advertising plan and teaching you how to scale your business through uh, surrounded, being surrounded by others who are doing it every single day. So if you think about what is it costing you not to open a new marketing channel, I would say that uh, even if you were to get 50% more traffic or two to three new clients in the next couple of weeks, we've had members doing this in week in a matter of days, would it, would it be worth your investment to try a new marketing channel? And what would it mean for you if you actually were to open a new marketing channel and get a lot more customers? 
that's a lot of times it's huge. You, you lose reliance on other channels. You really can start building another place where you're creating new content. So that's really what we have come together to, to try and show you guys how to do and get you more confident in that experience. So if you're opening a new marketing channel, it does not have to be arduous. If you have the right at support and experience, especially because there's almost nobody out there teaching anything about Pinterest ads, that's really uh, legitimate. <laughs> Uh, or understands Pinterest ads at scale um, and really teaches you how to deliver the highest performing ads right out of the gate. So uh, the ability to scale profitably is a very unique task. And it requires, that's one of the reasons why I never wanted to just do a course on Pinterest ads, because I don't really feel that it's that easy to just take a course and actually learn how to do this yourself. You may learn the basic elements of it, but without help, without somebody there walking you through it, it's extremely hard to do it by yourself. And especially if you don't have any background in ads or organic marketing. So if you guys want access to all the strategies and tools that we use to implement every single day, then you have the ability to connect with us in our six-week Pin Ads Academy bootcamp. So we're launching this starting next week where we're going to take you through six weeks of getting your actual ads up and running, making sure all your tracking is good, setting up your audiences, everything that you can imagine. It's a comprehensive full-scale marketing strategy that masters Pinterest ads from the entire ecosystem that is required to have success for ads. So a lot of people will deal with certain things, but if you get your ads set up properly, but your landing pages are terrible and nobody's giving you any feedback on that, you're not going to have good success and it's going to cost you a lot of money. So I've had so many clients waste so much money in that process and it just breaks my heart, especially when it can be easily avoided. So that's essentially why we created the boot camp. It's a culmination of six years of ad experience with uh, 35 to $50 million a year in spend for our clients and just being a profitable marketer that's helped us in with massive e-commerce brands. So we've seen and tested a lot of things with the newest strategies. We're always updating our, our team. We're taking the most ex advanced education and we've expanded the support and group mentorship to really help you guys have success on Pinterest. So uh, it's exclusive training. You can't get anywhere else. And we are the originals who have started from scratch with Pinterest marketing. We understand search buying behavior. We've mastered social media buying behavior. And essentially, we're constantly updating this training and doing it live allows me to answer all of your questions. It gives us a really good hybrid model because normally we only do done for you, which is more expensive. You have a higher retainer model, but you know you're going to get better results. You don't really get any instruction. There's no team training. And then, of course, courses, there's no support, no team training. It's impossible to keep them updated. So we essentially decided we were going to do a hybrid model where we still teach you how to run your own ads through a live training experience where we go through everything with you, get everything set up with you. And then we also have a learning portal in the back end where you will see us confidently testing and trying different strategies, different case studies, how to set up just the basics of running your, your ads. So you have that training portal, but then you can also come in and get all the experience and education with us, walking you through our intent, our intentional process of intent-based targeting, our e-com system, our interest optimization and metrics, what's happening at scale, getting you set up with intent-based targeting, which is step one being able to reach the right buyer. Step two, setting up the e-com system, which is your creative, your funnels, optimization, tracking, reporting, that kind of thing. And then making sure that you understand our customized process for app optimizing different budgets, how we measure KPIs and when to make adjustments to the ads, uh, the scale and creative that is needed at volume, different bidding strategies. And then of course, lots of our clients We've seen some crazy things happen with scaling. So we want to make sure that you guys have the best state-of-the-art opportunity to grow a new marketing channel. Some of the great things about Pinterest is lower CPAs than we see on Facebook. You can target keywords and interests. On general, our higher average order value because people are planning purchases, they're saving money, they're actually intentionally getting on Pinterest to purchase. Lower CPMs like $1.50 to $5 compared to $6 to $12 minimum on Facebook. So it's cheaper to acquire new customers over time. So we're seeing some awesome things uh, with 
Pinterest ads and setting up your pixel properly and really helping uh, our clients understand the process of uh, diversifying ad spend <laughs> and getting excited about uh, new marketing channels. So Denise is amazing. We helped her transition her entire in-person counseling center to a telehealth and to do more info, pro info products and telehealth counseling. That's been amazing. Uh, Jarrett's amazing. He's a chiropractor, but he always wanted to be in education and teaching new chiropractors. So we helped him transition to more of an info product. Uh, one is amazing. She does a lot of um, some coaching and so lead gen. And then she also has an e-commerce business that does different uh, things. She's got a lot of different cool products on her site from crystals and crystal water bottles and different things like that, that are really cool. And Jordan's amazing. They have a, um, an e-commerce brand that's focused on mom and mom and baby products. And within a couple of weeks of uh, working with us, started seeing some crazy results on Pinterest and were able to lower Facebook spend and increase Pinterest spend. Luke is awesome. He is a Pinterest marketer too. Was help, we've helped him get a lot of really good new clients. Eddie's amazing. And they send all of their clients to us for Pinterest ads to get training and educated and that kind of thing. So the six week program really is designed to help you elevate your mindset, give you proper tracking, set up your first ads, give you the information that you need to start scaling. We help you create creatives. We give you templates and all of that kind of stuff. So you can see what's converting and it's really our highest touch experience. And if you're ready to jump into a new channel, but you feel a little leery or you're not sure if this is going to be a good fit for you, I totally understand. Um, if you think your ideal client is on Pinterest, this is the best opportunity for you to get really good success. So within two to three weeks, you, be, you can become an ads master. And by a few months of working together, you're going to be like super confident and have the ability to use my brain <laughs> and my experience and give you a behind the scenes tour of all the juicy stuff and the, and the stuff that we're teaching and learning. And so uh, behind the scenes, you can see in our luxury state of the art training portal, we have a comp comprehensive pin ads training, everything from targeting, setting up your pixels, setting up your bidding and budgeting. We've got a really comprehensive strategy guide in there that walks through every part of the process, figuring out your emails, your funnels, uh, and then also we have all kinds of bonus trainings for different holidays. We've got a private community that you will join that you can ask us questions. You'll have access to our amazing staff who are the best in the world, Pinterest marketers. We've got tons of checklists and SOPs so that you know exactly what to do as you're beginning to create your new ads, setting up your audiences, finding the right interests. We've got weekly live ad trainings where you'll have ad clinics with us and you can ask questions. We can help you set up your ads together. Um, go through any issues that you're having, copy and creative as well. We'll go through all of that, your funnels, making sure that you'll have live Q&A troubleshooting, access to our team. We'll go through account overviews, audience overviews, creative overviews, and make sure that you're building out a system that's laser focused, uh, even in a group format to have so much one-on-one -on -one training with us. So and we're only opening this up to 10 new clients. So You'll have a very honed in, because like I said, I'm all about high touch and really explaining how to do things in a way that I know is actually going to help you open a new marketing channel, which definitely takes some help. But we do a lot of events. We've got optimization clinics. Uh, we help you drive traffic. We figure out your funnels for you, the best type of ads for you. We make sure that you understand our case studies and that you understand the entire process of why and how to create uh, and the strategy that's going to work, not just for this client, but ongoing for additional clients and for your brand. So it's a six week live ad optimization clinics with me, luxury state of the art training portal, where you'll have three months access to all the updates, weekly copy and creative clinic, private Facebook group, six weeks of coaching for my hands-on support. And of course we have some additional train, training options. If you need to have additional training members in there and then access to Christina, our client concierge, Lots of really good stuff we're going to be teaching you at scale. Uh, and then also we're going to actually be going through our eight-weekly eight implementation of account setup, designing your assets, figuring out your keywords and creatives, audience targeting, ad setup and structure, bidding and budgeting, analytics and KPI, and strategies for scaling and reporting as well. Um, yeah, so join us. Christina is going to drop a link in the chat if you guys want to join us. It's super affordable, uh, 250 bucks a week for eight weeks 
Or if you want to do pay in full option, then you get a special bonus, which is an extra week of live Q&A with me for 1500 bucks. This is the lowest and probably only time uh, that we are going to offer anything at this price. Normally our Pin Ads Academy is $6,800. So, and that's a six month program. So this, we wanted to give you guys like a jumpstart option so that you could within two months really come in and get all the things that you need in order to get your ads set up, especially if you need help. I know I did when I very first started and I really had to spend a lot of money, time, effort, and energy to really get the, <laughs> the, the training and understanding. So again, paying full bonuses, you will get an extra uh, week of Q&A with me. It's a $500 discount, which is amazing. We also have ad creatives and templates. You'll get that live event bonus. This is the only time we're going to offer $500 off with the extra week for me, access to me. Uh, so in general, it's $1,500 pay in full or $250 a week for eight weeks. And yeah, we definitely are here to help you guys. If you have questions, you can reach out to our client concierge. You can book a time to chat with us. And starting now, we'll allow you in six weeks to have an entirely new ad channel that you're ready to go for your brand or for your clients and help you confidently be able to set up new ads and scale. So just thinking about how many new sales are you missing by not opening a new channel that you know is where your ideal clients are hanging out. So definitely want to make sure that you think about that within 30 days. Most of our clients are making their investment back. So yeah, super affordable for the crazy results that we're getting. So definitely program is designed so that you have an individual strategy and I wanted to make it as high touch as possible. So, uh, okay. So of course we don't have any guarantees, but I can guarantee you if you don't do this, you're going to have much less opportunity to figure out the best strategies and spend more time. So um, if you're missing out on sales, we definitely are here to help you guys get started. You can get immediate access to the training portal and our calls start next week. So would love to guys to have you guys. So uh, think about what it would take in 60 days from now to have a completely new plan uh, strategy for your clients. So week one, we're getting accounts all set up, making sure that things are technically in place, giving you trainings and templates to make sure that you can troubleshoot your different processes, choosing and optimizing your offers and ad sets in week two, creating a powerful framework to optimize for sales. Week three is keyword mastery. We go through all the different types of keywords and how to strategize and use those. Week four, we're looking at copy and creative, making sure that you have really good high, high converting copy. Week five is audience setup and targeting, and just really diving into finding your right audiences, utilizing Pinterest buying behavior for your audience. Week six is ad setup and structure so you can understand our scaling so that you're ready to optimize. Week seven is budgeting bidding strategies and we'll go through and dive through what is working to get your account set up properly initially and then what's working at scale. And week, week eight will be mastering analytics for optimization. So imagine in two weeks from now, starting a new marketing channel and, and having crazy amounts of success. And again, you can't really reverse engineer this process. I tried doing it. <laughs> And thankfully, I always had really good mentors and I had a friend that actually worked at Pinterest. So I was allowed to get inside the back end when no one else could see different different metrics and things. So I've been able to use those skills and strategies to help our clients get radical results in a matter of weeks. So definitely you can reach out to Christina, support at pinsforprofit.com or reach out to me, ask us questions. Uh, we definitely want to help. So, okay. So let's chat some q and I'm going to do just a couple commonly asked questions that I get. Uh, how long does it take for pin ads to work? In general, I recommend giving yourself a solid four month trial, but most people hit it out of the gate within four to five weeks max. I would say some clients, if you already have a really good tested funnel, maybe two weeks. And that's not saying you're not going to see conversions. It just means like your ideal target KPIs and things like that, like hitting your ideal row as and CPA may take a little bit of time. Are Pinterest ads scalable? Yes, you guys saw like a million case studies of different things that are uh, growing and scaling on Pinterest. So yes, they're highly scalable. We have clients spending up to $150,000 a day during the holidays. Uh, will I be able to improve my organic traffic and SEO through Pinterest? Absolutely. Uh, we have seen, especially in the last eight or nine months, that creating a good organic strategy is actually helping lower the costs of the ad deliverables too. Is it affordable to run Pinterest ads? 
Yes. I mean, it depends on what your goal is as far as creating like your target CPA and things like that. You have to make sure that you have enough budget to test a new marketing channel. So running ads in general is not cheap, I would say, but if you have an idea of what your target metrics are, then over time, yes, Pinterest tends to be cheaper than Facebook, et cetera. What can you expect with ads? Some people, like I said, hit it out of the gate right away. Some people, it takes a little bit longer and it's a little longer of a battle, but you can definitely expect to see a good bit of delayed attribution. So time a person sees, sees an image, saves it, comes back later to purchase, typically is a little bit longer on Pinterest, uh, but things last a lot longer when you have success on Pinterest too. Um, how long does it take to get my account set up and running pretty quickly? We usually get that done within the first week or two for our clients. We always get our first round of ads up and running within the first week. So you can definitely do that. How long does it take through to get the material in the student training center? I would say probably three to four weeks. If you're spending four hour, five, I would say five to six hours a week. So something around there, there's a good bit of information in there, but you can definitely, it's broken out really clearly so you can handpick what you want to start researching. Uh, how long does it take to implement this amazing life-changing program? We designed it so that you would have six to seven weeks to master this entire process. Uh, time commitment, like I said, is probably four to six hours a week for six weeks. Um, yeah. Yeah. So join us inside the mentorship for sure. It's our highest touch experience. And we want to make sure that you guys feel really good and confident with our different clinics uh, to drive traffic, you get your copy and creative, get your ads set up and your optimizations, and then you'll get access to our training portal right away, private Facebook group, six weeks of coaching and hands-on support from our team. And definitely there's never been a better time to open a new marketing channel. And I don't want you guys to go six months from now and wish you had started now. <laughs> So join us in the six-week boot camp. Um, okay, so let me answer the questions in the chat here. Okay, do we spend um, on multiple verticals for yourself and not clients' accounts? Um, Jonathan's saying he can chat later, but I would say, yes, you can spend on multiple verticals in the same client account. That's why we have different uh, strategies that we use for different ad campaigns. Like say you have a group of products that's maybe unrelated, you can create your own audiences, create your own images, that kind of thing, targeting on different campaigns. So yes, you can definitely do that within one account. Um, if you're spending for multiple clients, I would not set it up to where you're setting up your own ad account and you're using the same ad account to create ads for multiple clients like you can do on Facebook. I would not recommend doing that. I would definitely recommend setting up an ad account for each client and running the ads through that ad account. Is it appropriate for someone new in e-commerce that has not launched or made sales? Yes, absolutely. This is the best way to get the best amount of information that you can get because we literally go through and break down everything from starting scratch to your first ad running, getting your creatives, what's working for funnels, um, what's working for messaging, setting up your ad account, all of that basic stuff we go through as well. Um, yes, it will definitely work if your average order value is very low, five to twenty dollars, a hundred percent. We have seen tons of great, in fact, a lot of our clients have really low priced products that we are able to use really well in the shopping campaigns and to try a lot of different smaller campaigns. And it just really depends on what your goal CPA is. So if your product is only five dollars, then your CPA ideally is somewhere around two to three dollars. So yes, we're seeing leads and we're seeing purchases for that for sure. Um, could you state when the Academy starts again, end of next week. So we're going live with our next, our first coaching call. So you'll get access right away to the student training center and you can actually start, uh, checking all that stuff out right away. What is the difference between this and our full $6,000 course? So that is a six month program and you get access to more of our tracking setup and training setup. And it's much more in depth. We do like um, because it's longer, you have longer access to more calls and stuff with us. So like you can ask more questions, you get more optimization training. There's a lot more bonus trainings on different holiday strategies, funnel strategies, tracking strategies, uh, different e-commerce strategies inside our longer program. 
this program is amazing for getting started, figuring out your, uh, if you want to just figure out if you want to use Pinterest ads, getting figuring out how to use your ads, create copy, all of that kind of stuff. I did this and actually a lot of times we'll offer this as part of our longer program just to for, I don't want to use the force, word force, but help people uh, get out of their own way and actually start and get things done and get things rolling right away. So it's my goal to like give you the strategies that you need in a compressed package so that you can get rocking right away. Um, organic pins. Organic, we do talk a lot about organic because it's not something that's easily separated out of ads, but I would say in general, we also do, yes, have an organic specific course. This is mainly focused on ads. It's mainly focused on keywords, but you can use all of that stuff on your organic stuff as well. Uh, what is the average CPC on the Pinterest platform? In general, I would say like right now, I just ran an analysis for one of our clients and their CPCs are 62 cents. So very low. Um, anywhere from 50 cents to $2 is probably about average on what we're seeing for cost per click. Um, but the, again, the conversion rates are typically higher because in general, they are higher uh, intention than just, you know, you may get a click on Facebook and of course it's disruptive marketing. And so there may be somebody that's intentional and they may not be as intentional. You never know. But with everything that we're doing in general, yes, we have higher conversion rates too. Um, yes, we can share, uh, if you want to email us, I will share you the information for our organic course support at pinsforprofit.com. We will message you some more info if you want help with organic. Um, oops, I accidentally sent that to Christina instead of to everyone. So forgive me. Yeah. So support at pins for profit. If you want something that's not related to the boot camp, we'll definitely share that for you. Um, okay. So experience with running successful listicle campaigns, exam example, seven top gadgets to make your home better, 26 coolest gadgets for your home. Yes. So we have a lot of clients that will do second site like that's a review site or a blog site or something like that. So we definitely have some really good strategies for that and have had some really good success with that for sure. And that's something that I do all the time for, um, for our SEO strategies too. That does really good. Um, I keep trying to type this in the chat. It's not working. So support <laughs> at pinsforprofit.com if you want some help for your organic as well. Um, okay, I'm waving to everybody who's also on our Instagram live. <laughs> Thank y'all for hanging out. Yeah, if you guys are interested in our Pin Ads Academy six week boot camp, message us support at pinsforprofit.com. You can get in touch with client concierge Christina at team.lindsayshearer on Instagram or Facebook. And then also you can DM us at any time and we'll definitely answer questions. You can also send your questions to support at pinsforprofit.com. And Christina, I think shared the link for the program here in the chat for you guys. If you're ready to get started, we'd love to have you. We'll be rocking and rolling as of next week. Okay. Um, and I will have this replay live here shortly so you guys can have that and we'll, we'd love to see y'all in there. All right. Have a great day. Happy Pinteresting. <laughs>